Okay, welcome back. Here we are at our last a uh, last video lesson for Unit Six, six ten, proof of the quadratic formula. So I kind of been promising this as we've been going forward, and here we are. You're going to get this. Actually, see your very first proof. Um, a lot of times, proofs can be a little intimidating, but just follow along, and uh, we'll see what we can do here together. Here's our math career for today. A political scientist. A political scientist. Um, they study the structure and theory of government and seek political and theoretical solutions to, of course, political problems. You can see your math down here that you're going to need. Um, it still requires a lot of discipline, a lot of critical thinking skills, and a lot of times along the way, you might have to be doing some economics and math work in order to uh, figure out problems for other countries or governmental situations, agencies, and so on. Political scientists. Also, if you like to live on the East Coast, maybe you live in Washington, D.C. Who knows? Math standards, here we are at 19.0. We finally get to the proof of our quadratic formula. And let's see what we can do here. So, a mathematical proof. This is a formal series of statements showing that if one thing is true, something else necessarily follows from it. If one thing is true, then something else is going to be forced to come after it. So let's take a look here at our very first proof. Here we have an unveiling of our, of course, our quadratic formula. And we have a question here. We've been given the quadratic formula, but where did this masterpiece of mathematics actually come from? I mean, someone, how did they just dream it up? How did someone come to this conclusion and were able to benefit from um, their discovery here? So we're going to need a new sheet of paper and a ready to work pencil. Okay, so make sure you're ready to go. Please follow along, and I'll go as slowly as I need to, but as quickly as we can. So here's our quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. If at any time you need to stop the video and, and catch up, feel free to do so, okay? Don't be, don't be afraid of doing that. All right, then. Here we are. So the first thing we want to do is when we're, you may say, where did this come from? Let's take a look. Let's back up one step. The first thing I'm going to do here is is get rid of this coefficient for x squared. I want a to go away because I really want x squared to be the number one. So how do we make x squared have a coefficient of one? Well, we're going to divide everything out by a. So because we're dealing with a polynomial here, whatever we divide one term by, we have to divide them all by, both sides. So we're going to, the a's will cancel here. We're going to have a little bit of a mess here, a little bit of a mess here, but zero divided by a, we know zero is your best friend in algebra one just going to be zero. So this is the result here dividing by a. These a's cancel, they reduce down to one which disappear, and now we have this. Now what's next? Next thing is I'm going to get rid of this plus c over a. That's got to be moved over. Remember we talked about completing the square here, we're going to move and move the c over to the right hand side to make room for our perfect square. So. We're going to subtract c over a from both sides because we've got positive c over a. We're going to subtract it from both sides. So let's do that. Remember that 0 minus anything is just going to be that negative number there. So we get negative c over a, and this c over a, c over a disappeared. All right, so here is where we are. This is a result of taking c over a from both sides. So let's move that up, and let's see what happens now. Now here, we needed what we called completing the square several lessons ago. And what we did was, remember we took b over, I'm sorry, we took um, b over a and squared it, correct? So when we do so, let's see what happens here. We're going to end up taking this, b over a, and we're going to square that right here, I'm sorry, right here in the center, and we end up with this guy right here, okay? So if we complete the square, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So I'm going to add this piece to both sides. Add this piece to both sides. Our first time through, this is going to look pretty messy. But after we've done it a couple of times, and if you work with it and, and so on, you'll see the pieces will start falling together here. Now, what we've got here is, hopefully, something we can work with. So this becomes here our perfect square trinomial. How do we find this piece? Remember that we would cut this guy in half and we place it right here. Okay, so basically all we did 
It's not the x disappears because we're only worrying about the coefficient here. The coefficient. Here's your x when we square it back out. So from here to here, this may take a little puzzling out. Where did this come from? Well, if we just square this out, what's b squared? Well, that's b squared. 2a squared is 4a squared. Now this might start looking familiar to you over here. You got your b squared minus c over 4a squared minus a, but it's still not quite done. On the right hand side here, we're going to need to come up with a common denominator, aren't we? So this is 4a squared, this is a, uh, 1a essentially. Um, so what are we going to do here? We have to multiply top and bottom by something to make them have common denominators. So we multiply top and bottom by 4a. And here's where your 4ac comes from. So now we have a common denominator of 4a squared. Our numerator is b squared minus 4ac, which should sound kind of familiar. Call the discriminant, yes? All right, left side remains unchanged. That's still the same. Now let's go ahead and combine these right here. So our common denominator of 4a squared. We're going to subtract the numerator, b squared minus 4ac. And now how do we make this exponent here 2 disappear? Well, the inverse operation of squaring something is to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root from both sides here. Take the square root of both sides. And the square and the radical sign here will wipe each other out. And don't forget, because we have all these variables, or one variable or more, we need to use plus or minus. So take the square roots of both sides. The square and the radical will cancel each other out, which leaves us with this. Now, where did the 4a squared go, for, go to? Well, the square root, remember we take the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. Well, the square root of 4, the principal square root of 4 is 2. And a squared, of course, is just a. Because we're already accounting for plus or minus, we don't have to worry about any conflicts there. Now, we're all but done. Uh, right here, we really want to get x by itself, so we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract b over 2a from both sides. So you might see something that is getting a little bit closer here. When we subtract b over a from both sides, we already have a common denominator of 2a. So there's your negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. So this is the proof of completing the square. We start with the quadratic equation. We use completing the square to work it all the way down to the quadratic formula, which we can then use to solve any quadratic equation or quadratic formula problem given to us. All right, and so there we go. Got the proof of the quadratic formula. So if you'd like to see another lesson on that, uh, you can jump over. If you follow that uh, same similar pattern, go to MA8CA and then take a look there in, I think it is 9-9, um, I believe. You can take a look at that proof. All right then, we'll take care and we'll see you soon.